What's up guys, my name's Brandon and this is the cheapest M4 Mac Mini and this is the cheapest M4 Pro Mac Mini. And in this video, I want to unbox them, run some tests and some benchmarks, and then answer the question of whether or not this is the best Mac for the money and if the M4 Pro chip is worth more than double the price of the M4 Mac Mini. I do also have the new USB-C Magic Keyboard with Touch ID since the Mac Minis do not come with a mouse or a keyboard. So anyway, so let's go ahead and start off with the base M4 Mac Mini, which starts at $600 amazing value for this M4 chip. And you can see on the box, we have Mac on one side, Mini on the other. And of course it does only come in one color, which is silver. So you can see the specs of this M4 Mac Mini. So we have 16 gigabytes of RAM along with 256 gigabytes of storage. And last time with the M2 Mac Mini, that was a major bottleneck. So we'll test to see if that's still an issue this year with the 256 gig standard model. So anyways, we do have our pull tabs. Let's go ahead and pull these off and unbox it. This this box, by the way, is just tiny. So I can't wait to see how small this is. It feels like I'm unboxing a HomePod. All right, so let's go ahead and see what this Mac Mini looks like. I did not even look at this in the store. And man, yeah, this thing is tiny. So as somebody with an Apple TV, at first glance, this just looks like a slightly larger Apple TV. Like even the weight is not that crazy. This thing is very lightweight and just like unbelievably small. Wow. Okay. So we'll look at that again in a moment, a little bit more in detail, but also inside the box, we do have our black cable here. So this is our power cable and that is the only thing it comes with. And it is braided by the way. Oh man, I'm getting a whiff of the smell. I know that's weird, but the smell is amazing from this Mac mini. I love the smell of a new Apple product, especially a computer. So also inside we do have our little pamphlet here and we do not have any Apple stickers. That's the new Apple. No more Apple stickers going forward unless you ask an employee. But inside we do have our little getting started guide right here. It's all so cute and tiny. Everything is tiny with this Mac mini. And here is a closer look at the Mac mini. So let's go ahead and peel off the plastic that's surrounding or the paper, I should say, that is surrounding this Mac Mini. So it goes all the way around. And the first thing you'll probably notice on the bottom is going to be the power button. So that is the most controversial thing about the new Mac Mini. So I don't think it's going to be a big deal, but we will test that out in a little bit. So you can see we do have Mac Mini etched in on the bottom here as well, along with our fan down here at the bottom. You can see kind of the thermals working there at the bottom. You can kind of see it protrudes out a little bit as well. It kind of looks like a Reese's cup from this angle. And on the front side of the Mac mini, which this is new, we have two USB-C ports and a headphone jack, which is really nice. I really like the headphone jack on the front as somebody who edits my videos using wired headphones. And then on the back here, we have our power outlet. We have our gigabit ethernet ports. We have our HDMI and we have three Thunderbolt 4 ports. If you get the M4 Pro version, you get Thunderbolt 5 ports right there. And while we're talking about it, let's go ahead and unbox the M4 Pro version. And you can see this comes standard with 24 gigs of RAM and 512 gigabytes of storage. So pretty nice to have for a base model, although this is $800 more than the M4 version. So this is $1,400 for the M4 Pro Mac Mini. So let's go ahead and unbox it. Now it is $800 more for the M4 Pro, but you're not just getting the M4 Pro chip. You're also getting some additional CPU and GPU cores. So the M4 has a 10 core CPU and a 10 core GPU, whereas the M4 Pro has a 12 core CPU and a 6 16 core CPU. And of course it does also have 24 gigs of RAM compared to 16 and 512 gigabytes of storage compared to 256. So basically it's an extra $200 to go up to 24 gigs of RAM on the base M4 and another $200 to go up to 512 of storage on the M4. So realistically it's $400 more that you're paying for the chip inside. But let's see if there's a difference here at all. And it is a little bit heavier. I did not think I would actually be able to feel this, but the M4 Pro is a little bit heavier. Not that you're really going to be picking up your Mac mini very often, but I can notice a slight difference in the weight. And just looking at these two, side by side, you're not going to be able to tell a difference in the M4 versus the M4 Pro really anywhere. So even on the bottom, it doesn't say M4 Pro. The power button is the same. It's in the same position and everything. And then on the back, even though we have Thunderbolt 5 
on the M4 Pro, you can see there's no difference. Nothing has changed here on the back in terms of port selection or any type of markings to say that it's Thunderbolt 5. And by the way, if you're wondering what the difference is in Thunderbolt 4 and Thunderbolt 5, the main difference is going to be with data transfer speeds. So you're going to get faster speeds when transferring over data. So 40 gigabytes a second on Thunderbolt 4 and 80 gigabytes a second on Thunderbolt 5. So it's going to be double as fast when it comes to transferring files. Thunderbolt 5 can also reach up to 120 gigabytes a second in bandwidth boost mode, which will basically just automatically allocate more bandwidth when needed, especially for high resolution displays. So this does not apply to data transfer speeds. So I would say for most people, Thunderbolt 5 is not needed. But if you want to keep this machine for like at least five years, it could be a good way of future proofing. But for me, Thunderbolt 4 is plenty fast. And really the main thing you need to note here as far as external display support is that the M4 Mac Mini can now support up to three displays at the same time. Whereas with the M2 Mac Mini, you could only have two external displays hooked up at a time. Okay, so now I want to set these Mac minis up and run through some tests and some benchmarks. But to do that, we do need to unbox our new Magic Keyboard with Touch ID because again, we did not get any accessories with these Mac minis. That's the reason that the price point is so low. So this is the new, for the first time, USB-C on the Magic Keyboard, which is nice to see. We do have our little green pull tab right here. Let's go ahead and pull that. So here it is. You can see we have our on-off switch switch here on the right along with our USB-C port right there in the middle. Pretty straightforward. It is just a keyboard and inside we do have our USB-C, our braided USB-C to USB-C cable along with a little getting started guide. Okay, so now let's go ahead and plug in the power cable to our Mac minis and let's hook these up to my studio displays and run through some tests. Okay, so we just hooked up the Mac mini and this is going to be my first test of the new power button. So we're going to answer the question that I had after watching the event and seeing the unveil and that is can you turn on the Mac mini without lifting the machine up and the answer is no you do have to lift up the Mac a little bit to be able to press the power button now you can lift it up with one just one hand right here and you can kind of use your other finger to give you some support and then feel around with your finger for the power button and I will say that it does stick out like you can feel where the power button is it's great that it's not flush otherwise it would be really hard to tell you know where you're actually pressing like what's the power button so there is a little indentation there that lets you know that the power button is there and you can just simply press on it and then you can put the Mac down easily and you can hear the boot up sound right there so I don't think it's gonna be a big deal for most people I personally do not turn off my Mac like at all I, I restart it but I don't really turn it off barely ever like it only gets turned on when the power goes out so I don't think it's a big deal. And I think it's a great benefit that you can do everything with just one hand. You don't have to have another hand lift up the Mac and then another you know, hand to put under and touch the power button. So let's go ahead and hook up these Mac minis to my studio displays using the Thunderbolt ports. Okay, so here's something new. It says double press the power button. So it says to set up Touch ID on your Magic Keyboard, double press the power button on your Mac to ensure secure connection. So that's something new. So we just double pressed. Okay, and now we can go ahead and enter our Touch ID. That was interesting. I wonder if that's going to be the case every time or if that's just for the initial setup. And let's go ahead and check what version this Mac mini came on. So let's go to our settings, general, and then into about. And right here we have the M4 Mac mini. And this came with version 15.0. So Mac OS Sequoia 15.0. And you can see the build number there. So if we go ahead into our software updates, let's see what we get as a software update. It should be 15.1. Yes. So that's what you would have installed if you did it through the initial setup process but you can always do it later here as well. And here's something interesting. The M4 Pro Mac Mini came installed with macOS 15.1, and we still have a day one software update. It's most likely just to add support for this new Mac. But I found it interesting that the M4 came with 15.0 and the M4 Pro came with 15.1. Okay, so we're gonna get to installing all of our benchmarking tools and all of our applications, and we'll come back with some results later on. Okay, so we're back after a few hours of testing the M4 and M4 Pro Mac minis. And I'm pretty surprised by the results. And I've come to a different conclusion than what I had with the M2 Mac mini compared to the M2 
Pro. So we'll talk about that in a moment, but starting off with the Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, which will measure the speeds, the write and read speeds. So the M4 had a 2004 megabytes per second write speed and a 2,971 megabytes per second read speed. And if we compare that to the M4 Pro, it's pretty much double on both ends. Not quite with the read, but for the write, we scored over 4,000 megabytes a second. So 4,123, and then for the read speeds, we got just over 5,000, so 5,096 megabytes per second. We did also run a Geekbench 6 test. So for that, we scored a 3810 on the single core for the M4 compared to a 3752 on the M4 Pro. And then for the multi-core, we scored a 14544 on the M4 and 19957 on the M4 Pro. And for the GPU, we scored a 37,696 for the M4 and a 60,904 for the M4 Pro. And just for fun, I did also run a Geekbench AI score and you can see 6318 versus 6971. So pretty close between the two, but that's my first time running that test here on the channel. Now we did also run a Cinebench test. So this was the one I was most interested to see. And taking a look at the M4, we scored a 13515 on the multi-core CPU. And then for the single core CPU, we scored a 21. Oh, wait. That gives us an MP ratio of 6.41. Now on the M4 Pro, we scored a staggering 19,369 on the multi-core and 2142 on the single core. That is a 9.04 MP ratio. I will be running additional benchmarks over the coming weeks before my final review. But as far as real world testing, the first thing I wanted to try is something that I personally use every single day and that is Final Cut Pro. So I tried a export test here so this was a 4k 60 fps video this is about a hundred gigabytes about 96 gigabytes was the end result for this video so a very heavy video and for the m4 it exported that video in six minutes and 37 seconds and the m4 pro did that same video in two minutes and 42 seconds so the m4 pro at least for the video exports that i did was more than twice as fast as the m4 i was not expecting that now don't get me wrong the m4 mac mini is no slouch i mean exporting a nearly 100 gigabyte file in six minutes and 37 seconds is very impressive but the m4 pro just killed it with the video export test now here's where things got interesting so if you remember with the m2 mac mini the ssd was very slow for the 256 gigabyte model but now with the m4 mac mini the 256 gig model apple is back to using two 128 gigabyte chips to make up that 256 gigs of storage which means that we're not going to be bottlenecked with our speeds and I tested this multiple times and you know I, one of the tests I ran was a speed test here when transferring files over so this is an area where I really saw you know a big bottleneck with the M2 Mac mini compared to M2 Pro the M2 Pro is much faster at transferring over files but here with the M4 you can see that the difference between these two when I was transferring over 60 gigs of files it was this audio folder right here with which has 103 files in it it was a less than 30 seconds difference so two minutes and 30 seconds versus two minutes and 57 seconds and transferring files is one of the things I think most people are gonna do on a daily basis so this is you know good to see that the m4 pro is not significantly faster than the m4 at least in this area I did also want to touch on the thermal so I did not notice any type of thermal throttling which is great especially for a base model machine and just to the touch I mean you're not probably gonna to touch your Mac mini very often but I did touch the top of the Mac mini and the m4 pro was cooler than the m4 which is not a big surprise the fan inside of the m4 ran more frequently than on the m4 pro since it had to work harder so of course that is going to make it a little bit hotter inside as well so with all that being said should you buy the base m4 mac mini or the m4 pro mac mini and i would say that unlike last year you know the 256 gig base model is not sluggishly slow when it comes to your daily tasks. I don't have to entice you to upgrade to 512 like I did with the M2 
Mac Mini. So I think that the base model is gonna be good enough for most people, especially now that we have 16 gigs of RAM. You know, we do have 24 on the M4 Pro, but most people, unless you're a professional, you don't need 24 gigs of RAM. 16 gigs, especially on Mac OS, goes a long ways. So I think that the M4 Mac Mini, especially for the price, is perfect for a family computer, or even if you are a semi-professional, even if you do 4K video editing, if you do Photoshop, if you do Lightroom, things like that will run perfectly fine on the M4. I would just suggest that you run everything off of an external NVMe SSD. That way you're not eating away at your 256 gigs of storage, because of course that will go quick if you are not using external storage but if you are going to spend the extra money and upgrade something upgrade the storage and not the ram because again i think 16 gigs is going to be good enough for most people so then who is the m4 pro mac mini 4 and i would say that's for people who do creative work on a daily basis and people who have more intensive workflows so i think that m4 pro is going to be complete overkill for basic web browsing basic coding basic video editing or even basic gaming you know you're only going to see the benefits when it comes to those more intensive workflows where you have multiple intensive applications open up at once. Like you're editing a Lightroom photo while your Final Cut project is exporting. And at the same time, maybe you have an Xcode project opened up. You know, that's where you're really gonna need that extra RAM, that 24 gigs of RAM, and maybe those extra GPU cores. But for most people, the base $600 M4 Mac Mini is going to be the one to get this year without even needing to worry about upgrading the storage, unless you just really want that peace of mind and you're gonna keep it for a long period of time. So I hope this video was helpful. I will be doing a more long-term review on the M4 and M4 Pro Mac minis and see if anything has changed after using both of them for a longer period of time. So stay tuned for that. But if you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that review. And I'll see you guys very soon.